protect those whom we loved. That is the duty of every shepherd, a duty of every leader, a duty of every parent. And so we can see the protective um, embrace of St. Paul for the Christians at Ephesus because he was leaving them. And so Jesus too, in today's gospel, he prayed to his father, I have washed over them, not one is lost, except the one who chose to be lost. And so Jesus was leaving and he knew that the disciples, they would still remain in the world. And uh, the world will hate them. In the context of the first reading, St. Paul speaks also about the challenges, not just from the world outside, but from the world inside. Because there will be uh, enemies from within, not just enemies from without. And this is even more, you can say, insidious. Even from your own ranks, there will be men coming forward with a travesty of the truth on their lips to induce the disciples to follow them. And so as leaders, we have this uh, obligation or this primary duty to protect our loved ones. So how can we really protect our loved ones? So St. Paul says, <clears throat> be on your guard yourself. Twice he said, huh? be on your guard for yourself and for all the flock. Be on your guard yourself. I think it's very important for us as leaders. We too, as Jesus says in the gospel, we live in this world. We are influenced by this world. We are contaminated by this world. Even today, living in this world, you cannot shield yourself from all the, what we call, um, temptations, all the ideologies and the worldly values and philosophy of life. To guard ourselves does not mean to say, therefore, we protect ourselves from, you can say, uh, injury. It's not about, uh, it's protection of our own moral and spiritual life. I think this is very important. Uh, as leaders, if we do not find enough time to rest, take care of our physical health, spiritual health, moral health, it's very important. Otherwise, we get... Uh, you can say caught up in all this uh, propaganda of the world. And in a very subtle manner, we absorb these values and we pass on to our children. And we begin to make our children think the way the world thinks. So, again, as I said, it is not an easy, um, you can say, and easy things to do because even priests, religious, we are all affected uh, with this, uh, we can say, uh, worldly society that we live in. But we need to be on guard. So that is why, uh, going back to our moral and spiritual life, we need to strengthen ourselves. As leaders, it is not enough just to feed, to educate, to form. That is one way. That is one way. But protection is also to prevent them from being misled by the world. And as I said, in, in today's world, even within our own church, eh, we have so much confusion that is happening. We are not too clear of so many things that are happening. And so, uh, there's a lot of, you can say, conflicting opinions within the church. It's not just outside. If it's just outside, we can stand strong, but it is within. Even priests, clergy, religious, they are also involved, and they are giving us conflicting signals, so we do not know exactly where to stand. And this is where St. Paul said, you know, it is important, therefore, that we must keep the word of God, remembering, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, that has the power to build you up and give you your inheritance. The word of grace, the word of God. We need to be grounded in the word of God. Of course, the word of God ultimately would be the doctrines as well. And these doctrines are protected by the church through the magisterium, where the Pope together with all the bishops, 
when they pronounce doctrines. So that is the only way we can be guaranteed, be assured that we are walking in the right direction. One person can go wrong, one bishop can go wrong, but together as church, this is where we believe that the Holy Spirit will inspire the church and I will be with you until the end of time. So that's why again we are preparing for the Feast of Pentecost. Holy Spirit is given to the church to help the church to understand, to deal with new situations, new challenges. And we will always have new challenges, new situations all the time. Holy Spirit is given to us and to preserve the church in the truth. That's why Jesus in today's gospel consecrated them in the truth. Your word is truth. And without the Holy Spirit guiding us, protecting the church, then we do not know what would be the right thing to do. And we believe, therefore, the Holy Spirit, first and foremost, will guide the magisterium. Secondly, the Holy Spirit also gives His uh, protection to the entire church. Uh, especially in this synodal process, we speak of the census fide, from the first to the last person in the entire church. If we all have common, what we call, agreement in faith and morals, we know it is the truth. So it's how do we, as church, uh, come together. That is why in the synodal process, this is what we actually we are asking our people. Before we make judgment, let us listen. Let us listen to each other. Let us listen to the new situation, the new challenges. And then together, let us pray. We pray to the Holy Spirit, asking Him to help us to discern how the Spirit is asking us to deal with these new issues that are not clear in the Scriptures. Because the Scriptures... Um, uh, don't deal with specific problems, with principles, yes, but not with every situation because those situations has not yet developed. And so this is very important. And that is why today, you know, as we um, come together, we pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us. But that is the vicarious sacrifice we are called to do. And this is what, uh, as leaders, uh, we need to be ready to stand up for the truth, and we will suffer for that. But again, uh, that is what the Lord is asking of us. So we pray that as we uh, prepare ourselves for the Feast of Pentecost, that we too will be consecrated in the truth, and most of all, that we will continue to um, be courageous, to walk in faith, even when we are misunderstood, but also always for the good of our future generation. And this is true, particularly parents, but the truth also can be spoken in uh, always with charity.